Hello, good evening, everyone. In, in part one, we'll see the imaging techniques and the basic ultrasound anatomy of the female gynecologic pelvis. As in this line diagram, we can see the structure of the female pelvis in the sagittal image. The bladder anteriorly, the uterus posterior to the bladder, and posterior to the uterus, the sigmoid, and the spine, the posterior most, and symphysis pubic anteriorly. From cranial caudally, we can see the body of the uterus, then cervix and vagina. On the ethnic cell side, we can see the fallopian tube and the ovaries. As we know, ultrasound plays an integral role as it helps in delineating the organ or site of the abnormality, gives close diagnosis and differentials. We have both transabdominal and trisvaginal sonographic techniques in which uh, the transvaginal scan is now more considered essential. Color and spectral Doppler sonography also helps in assessing the normal and pathologic blood flow. It distinguishes the vascular structures from the non-vascular structures. A recent addition, the sonohistogram, gives detailed evaluation of the endometrium and helps differentiating the intracavity endometrial and submucosal lesions. Ultrasound also helps in guiding the various interventional procedures, which could be both therapeutic and the diagnostic. As you know, the MRI has uh, excellent soft tissue resolution. It's usually recommended when the ultrasound is non-conclusive and in the staging of the pelvic malignancies. CT has very limited role in the pelvic imaging and is usually used for cancer staging. Various, uh, coming to various sonographic techniques, first we'll discuss the transabdominal sonography in which the most important prerequisite is the optimally distended bladder. What do you mean by the optimally distended bladder? I'll tell you, the optimally distended bladder is the one when it fully covers the fundus of the uterus, as we can see in this image. And the highest frequency transducer possible should be used, usually around 3.5 to 4, uh, 5 to uh, 5 megahertz. And images are taken both in the sagittal and the coronal planes. We can see here the long axis or the sagittal image of the uterus. And the second one is the transverse plane or the coronal image of the uterus. And both ethnics are usually visualized by scanning obliquely from the contralateral side. How we can see directly as well the ethnics are. Coming to the transvaginal sonography in which the prerequisite is just opposite. We need empty bladder. The empty bladder helps in pushing down the pelvic organs close to the transducer. In this what happens, we introduce the probe near the vagina with the use of a sterile sheet, usually the condom, over which the coupling gel is applied. And for this procedure, verbal consent should always be taken and procedure should be explained beforehand. It is contraindicated in virginal patients and the patients not willing to give consent. And in patients with narrow introitus or vagina having discomfort at attempted insertion of the transducer. As we can see here in the line diagram, the transducer in the vagina. We can see the uterus in the sagittal and coronal plane in the transvaginal scan. The resolution is definitely much better than the transabdominal scan. And precaution should be taken while doing the scans for the infertility patients. In infertility patients, instead of using the normal coupling gel over the uh, sterile sheet of the transducer, sterile water or saline should be used as the outer lubricant because the normal coupling gel adversely affects the sperm motility. Now coming, uh, sometimes to see the adnexa, we need, have, we need to have extreme angulation and also to see the uh, cul-de-sac. Sometimes the abdominal palpation might be helpful to bring the uh, region of interest closer to the transducer. We know both.